You asked and we listened. Turns out our SaaS ideas videos are some of the most popular on the channel. So I'm back again today with seven more SaaS ideas. I'm surprised no one's built yet. I'm Rob Walling. I've started six companies. I've written three books on building startups. And I'm actually wrapping up my fourth right now. And I'm an investor in more than hundred startups. I wanna kick this video off by giving a shout out to my longtime friend, Justin Vincent, who is the source of all of today's ideas. He runs a website called Nugget at nugget.one, and he gave me permission to share these business ideas that I pulled from his database of approximately 4,000 startup ideas. As always, I wanna say no validation has been done on these ideas. They have been requested by real people. So before I went out and built one of these, I would absolutely take some steps to validate. Maybe I'd run them through the 5 p.m. idea evaluation framework I've mentioned several times. If you go to startupsfortherestofus.com, you can find the episode where I talk through that and download the PDF. So let's dive into our first idea, a delivery route management system. This person says, I'm a delivery courier with a route of approximately 450 stops. There is currently no software available in the Canadian iOS market that will allow me to put in all of the addresses and mark off as I deliver each one. There are many options for trucking companies, but they are not able to handle small routes like mine. My dream application would have the ability to input routes manually, the ability to track routes by GPS, memo, and voice features for each stop, flagging a tool for addresses, and he talks about a few other requirements. Now here's the kicker of this idea. He says, I only make $100 a week doing this route, so the app would need to be less than $5 to be feasible in my budget. Having an application like this would meet those needs and would allow me to have a smoother, more efficient route. So what do we think about this? I think delivery route management systems are crazy fun to build if you're a builder. But in this case, the price point is such that this might not be one that you want to approach. I think that my next steps for this would be to find out if there is a place where folks who do these low cost routes hang out and to consider to reach out to them and to figure out if this is a need that anyone else has because this is something that one person asked for and are they willing to pay a subscription or do they really just want to pay a $5 one-time fee? Because obviously that's a non-starter at that point because the audience for this is not large enough. Idea number two is smarter call desk management software. The commenter writes, I work in a business IT help desk. When a problem is called in, we create a ticket for the issue and all communication goes through that. One big issue that seems to come up is when people have a ticket in for a long time, it seems to become forgotten by both the person who put it in and the person at the help desk. I feel a good solution that could be implemented is a simple automatic system that could see when those original tickets were put in and after a set period of time could begin regularly notifying those people that they still have a ticket in and whether there is anything new or if the ticket is still needed. So with this idea, I wonder, is this just an add-on to an existing ecosystem? You know, there are a lot of help desk ticketing software out there already. Do they not do this? It feels like a pretty obvious feature to me. So if they don't, is there a way to just build an add-on and make this a step one business that maybe you can add on to Jira or any of the other help desk software that's already out there? To me, this one is a research play where I'm gonna go out and look at the top five or 10 help desk systems and I'm gonna see, do they already do this? Because I don't wanna build an entire help desk system just to add this tiny feature to it. It's not gonna be worth the effort and you're gonna spin up a whole business org and try to compete against these massive software companies in order to just have differentiation on this one feature. And in almost all cases, that's not a great idea. Our third idea is shift management software for food vending teams. The commenter posts, I work in the food industry. I would love an app that would help me allow employees to schedule from home. It'd be great if I could count the people I have for a shift and be able to show me what positions are covered. For example, do I have two sandwich makers in the morning? a speaker person, a grill operator, etc. I would want to be able to copy over one week into the next and have a place where I could put projected sales so I would know if I'm using too much labor. I looked for apps in the Google Play Store. None of these were sufficient. Many of them were too time consuming and a mess. Selling into the restaurant space or the fast casual space, it is a market. It can be challenging to get in. To me, this is also another research play of what exists today. Just because there's competition doesn't mean you should build it. but has this person just not found the right app and, and it already exists and you building this isn't gonna help? Or do you have any type of in or connection to the food industry? And if all the apps really aren't that good, do you have a unique insight that could help not only solve this person's problem, but potentially be a level up compared to the other apps that are on the market? Our next idea is self-serve scheduling for cleaning businesses. The commenter says, 
I've owned a small cleaning business for years. We've never had a simple way to schedule jobs. What would be great is for my regular customers to go to a website, schedule the day and time they want us to visit, and it would match that up with when we have employees available. Selling to cleaning services can be a challenge. They are very price sensitive, the margins are not great, and they have high turnover. In addition, you're choosing customer pain over competitor pain in the sense that they're gonna be mostly non-technical users. My biggest question here is, can you charge enough to justify building this app? And if your ambition is to make 5,000, 10,000 a month, then maybe this is something that you wanna entertain. I do think the price sensitivity and high churn is gonna potentially be an issue, but this would be one where I'd be looking at how can I contact and reach cleaning companies at enough scale? How can they find me at enough scale to make the low price point worth it? Our next idea is invoicing software for bakers. Commenter says, I work for a small business that is a bakery. We have a lot of orders that come in each day, usually requiring five to 10 hours of work to complete. There are cakes, pies, platters of cookies, etc. When we get the order, we put the invoices into an electronic system, it collects the money. But since they're custom orders, we often guess how much to charge the customers based on the amount of labor and materials, as well as a 20% profit. It would be great if there was software that could help me get a better estimate of what the cost would be if I input minimal details about the product. So this isn't just an invoicing system, it's an estimating system as well. And there are a lot of industries that need estimating software and to use a broad proposal or invoicing or estimation system doesn't work because it's not strongly typed to that problem. In my opinion, this starts with some research. Does something like this already exist? And if it doesn't, then it's contacting bakeries and asking, is this a problem? What have you done to solve this problem? Have you looked for software like this or is pen and paper fine? And you're gonna to need to have 10, 20, 30 conversations to get enough data to figure out if other folks have this problem and then start exploring what would it be worth if that problem were solved for them? What would they be willing to pay? The next idea is an aircraft maintenance logging platform. Commenter says, I work in aviation. A pain point in my career is that we have paper logging that we physically write in and sign. And he goes on to describe that when he does maintenance, he'll write a line and then sign underneath it along with his AP number, which I'm sure is an acronym that people in aviation know. And he says, see how this can be abused. Anyone could come along, copy my number, copy my writing style, copy my signature, and they've just made a false entry under my information. If you're in aviation, I'm fascinated to hear if this is still how it's done on small airfields. So in my shoes, if you have any ties to aviation, or even if you don't, I would be looking to have some conversations to find out, do most of them still use pen and paper? And do they have any desire to switch to software? Because with aviation being such a regulated industry, I do think there might be some resistance to moving towards software to do something like this, especially with maintenance, where if you mess this up, you could potentially have a plane crash, which is obviously a big deal. But it does feel like this commenter's problem is a major pain point. This is definitely an aspirin that I can imagine some people wanting to fix. Alternatively, I can imagine some folks saying, this is the way we've done it for 50 years. Why would we change? And the last idea of today is merger and acquisition data room software. So it's M&A data. I work on mergers and acquisition. There are a number of deal management systems, but most are missing necessary items. A great deal management system, it's also known as a data room, should be mostly project management that allows all stakeholders to interface through the system and work on the deal due diligence and complete tasks with transparency to all stakeholders. It should have the abilities to redact files within the system and incorporate document signing technology. The system should be able to essentially be white labeled by the intermediary. The competing systems are expensive and every professional shop doing large numbers of transactions each year need to have it. I would pay for it. Of course, there are a lot of M&A deals and there's a lot of money flowing around and there is data room software. To me, this would be a lot of conversations of finding out, are you actually unhappy? Obviously this commenter is unhappy with his or her data room software, but how many M&A brokers, investment bankers don't like the data room software they're using? If the argument is just that it's too expensive, I'd wanna see what those cost. Cause if it's 15,000 a year and you feel like you can build an amazing data room package, sell it for 10K, that's still a pretty good margin. As long as the sale process is not arduous and it's not months and months of phone calls and procurement. There's absolutely money in this market. The question is, do people need it? Do they actually wanna switch? And to do that, you're gonna to need to have a lot of conversations. That's it for our seven SaaS ideas. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, I'd love it if you'd hit the like, subscribe to the channel, 
We're gonna be putting out another ideas video here in the next month or two, and we're gonna to try to have a regular cadence. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.